Hey guys, it's Danny. Today it is time for our monthly Orchids in Bloom video. It is the last of this year. If you're new on my channel, well, every month we make a sort of a poll where you guys can vote for your favorite orchid that month. As a matter of fact, let's just take a quick look at the winner for last month and a few comments from you guys telling us why you liked that particular orchid. I might be doing something next year based on the votes which would be super, super fun. So if you'd like to vote for your favorite orchid this month, check the description down below for a link to the poll. And also let me know in a comment why you voted for the orchid that you did. But before we get into the subject, let me just remind you that we only have a few more days left until the Orchids at Heart campaign is completely over. For the past month and a half, we put together a line of merch, especially created for this occasion with the intent of donating all the proceeds to Doctors Without Borders. Furthermore, repotme.com will match and donate 10% of all that we gather. And the best part about it is, no matter what you buy, you know you help somebody. So in case you didn't know about our campaign, check the description down below. I will link you to it. In three or four days, everything will be gone and the money will be donated. So if you wish to participate and get yourself a piece of clothing or a mug, now is the time. So with that said, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it and why not subscribe? I post three times a week although I am actually taking a break for the holidays about a week or so so this will be the last video of 2020 and I will see you guys in 2021 but don't worry I will be back soon with more interesting orchid videos so with that long intro out of the way let's just look at the orchids in bloom so let's start with the Vanda orchid and this is actually the oldest Vanda currently in my collection this is Wrinkle Redis, currently reclassified as Pere Rara Bangkok Sunset. The old name was a little easier to pronounce for me. And she really is the crown jewel of my Vanda collection. Even though in recent years I did acquire quite a lot of varied Vanda orchids that I absolutely love, back then there wasn't a lot of variety available for me and this was just my favorite orchid hands down. And since I am so emotionally attached to it, she has been with me through the move, through the various problems that I had with my orchids, she's the crown jewel. It's more than just looks here. Anyway, it doesn't really look old because it's not a big Vanda and it also does not grow very fast. I did lose a bunch of leaves due to sunburn a couple of years ago, but overall don't expect this orchid to get out of hand very, very fast. So in seven years, look at her. It kind of looks like it didn't grow much. Bonus, she is very, very easy to care for, does not actually require as much light as most other Vandas, and she has a beautiful, subtle, floral perfume that is mostly noticeable in the daytime. In the nighttime, I don't think it actually smells like anything. I do notice that in wintertime, the flowers are not all that colorful. Definitely, it prefers heat. But this is the first year that I have two flower spikes on it at the same time, even though not really in sync, but I'm really happy with her performance. Next up here we have Prestichia vitellina, which is one of the orangest orchids in my collection. I also really do enjoy the foliage, which is glaucus, it has a blue-gray sheen to it, and again it's one of the older orchids in my collection. It is not a fast grower, and for me it hasn't been super, super vigorous. However, it's always bouncing back from whatever it's suffering, if it's suffering from anything. It's just one of those orchids that doesn't impress with its growth and vigorousness, but certainly it's a pretty powerful little orchid. I cannot really say I had issues with it other than slow growth, but it has always bloomed for me every single year. And the flowers are really, really pretty, not fragrant, but look at that, they're fiery orange. And that yellow on the lip really helps with the illusion of fire. Really love this orchid. I'm hoping now that it's in organic medium, it's gonna take off a little more, but since it's an older orchid and probably has been through Fusarium, I'm not entirely sure, but I still love it. I'm not considering a replacement. I'm really happy with her. It's just that I feel like she can do a little better. And since we're kind of in the Cattleya realm, let's continue. 
look at that we have the golden peacock in bloom once again this orchid blooms multiple times a year for me from the same directions of growth it is a super fast grower so in comparison to the previous two orchids this one can become a bush of an orchid in about a couple of years coupled with the fact that it can bloom on each mature growth she is a joy to grow i actually included her in my top five cattleya orchids worth having it's not fragrant although sometimes at night she can actually have a brassavola type scent but it's not all the time it's not a very stable gene in my particular one so i wouldn't go for the scent but the coloration is beautiful it takes the exact same care as any other cattleya you're gonna have in the description a beginner tutorial to cattleyas I don't do anything special for it. I grow her outside in the warm months. Now she's in the plant room under LED panels and she's not complaining. She never complains about anything, to be honest. She just grows and blooms and does its thing. Next here we have the Catlichia Siam Jade, which unfortunately I didn't film in its prime. This orchid never lasts for me for whatever reason. The flowers last a few days, which is a little weird. This orchid has been set back, but now she is okay. I'm not entirely sure if it has to do with the setback she suffered about a year and a half ago. Maybe it does, but yeah, as you can see, the flowers are not fully open. When I saw that they were starting to close, I filmed her really fast, but like a day before this happened, I took photos for Instagram and she was in tip-top condition and fragrant. So I don't know, maybe this particular one has some issues, maybe not. You guys should let me know how long does your Siam Jade stay in bloom if you have her. Because I really like her. It's one of the very few orchids with green flowers. They're apple green and beautiful. And she is fragrant. She has a sort of sweet floral type of a scent. This particular one is not very strongly scented for me. Plus it doesn't last all that long. Which is not necessarily what I read on the internet about this orchid. Hence, I'm wondering if there's something wrong with mine and I should consider a replacement. I don't know. It's just not performing. The orchid is performing, she grows vegetatively really, really well, but the flowering is a little lackluster, so. Next up, the orchid you saw in the intro. This is my beautiful lady in red, which as it just so happens is my logo. <laughs> I didn't create the logo with her in mind. I purchased her after my boyfriend made the logo, but it just so happens that the colors fit. So she's kind of like my mascot at this point. It is a super, super vigorous Catlea orchid. Again, I featured her in my top Catleas worth having. She has a few directions of growth and it, it's always blooming. It blooms multiple times a year. Each direction of growth pretty much blooms. She is not fragrant, but that coloration is out of this world. It's so intense, a very dark cherry, let's say red, with a beautiful yellow spotted lip. Some of you, I think, are already sick of her because she's been in bloom quite a few times this year, so I'm not going to insist, but I am really enjoying this orchid. She's very, very, very vigorous. Next up, another Catlea. This is a new one. This is the Catlea Mahina Yahiro Uli, which I recently purchased from Orchis Deluxe. It arrived with a sheath and the buds developed in the sheath. And oh my, the flowers are huge and they're so fluffy and beautiful. I always wanted to have a few Catleas of the sorts. I typically have medium-sized flowered Catleas. They tend to have waxy flowers. So I was really looking forward to some of these fluffy, I would say classical looking Catleas. And I'm very happy with this one. She's slightly fragrant. Again, has a sort of floral, subtle scent. Very typical Catlea scent. If you're well-versed in the Catlea scent world, yeah, this one will not surprise you. Smells typical. It is, however, I believe at this moment, the biggest flowered Catlea or orchid in my collection. Next up, we have Catlea King Ming Beauty. And this one, you guys. Okay, it looks absolutely amazing, right? 
kind of looks a little like Burana Beauty. Yes, it's one of her parents. And guess what else it inherited from the Burana Beauty, but I would go ahead and say it's even better, the fragrance. If you are a fan of rose scents, but oh no, you cannot grow roses in your apartment, get this orchid. It smells like roses and not necessarily the damask rose type of a scent. It's the scent that's slightly more fruity. Some of you who are well-versed in roses will know what I mean. It smells identical to roses and it's powerful. And this work, it lasted. It lasted in bloom almost a month or so. And each day when I went in the plant room, I was welcomed by the smell of roses, which personally I adore. I even like it in products. I'm that type of a person. The scent on this one is the fresh type of a rose. So I do enjoy how it looks like. I do like the fact that it can create cluster blooms, but the fragrance is magnificent. It's the best rose type of fragrance in my collection. It will compete with Princess Jackie. I would say that if you're a fragrance lover and you stumble upon this orchid, just get it. Just trust me on this one. Treat it right, make it bloom, and you're welcome. <laughs> And the last little kitty we're gonna look at is my Orantiaca Hybrid. I purchased this one with some information that it's an Orantiaca, but I don't, I don't know at this point. Now in this pot, I actually have two of the same orchid. I purchased one myself and then for Valentine's, my boyfriend went to the exact same flower shop and purchased the second one they had for me. So I didn't wanna give that away. And what I decided to do is plant them together and create a fake specimen. I even filmed it. So if you search on YouTube, Miss Orchid Girl fake specimen, you will find the video, you will see what I mean. And look at the bloom display, it's all over the place. As the flower spikes were developing, I moved it in the plant room and I put it on a shelf, which was a little too high and the flower spikes started to grow downwards towards the light, towards the window. Hence why the display is a little wonky, but it's still okay. I love it. It's not fragrant, but it grows like a weed. Only blooms once a year and is a pretty, pretty big orchid. At this point, I'm reconsidering a little bit my decision to make a specimen out of this particular one because it actually needs a stand of its own, but it has sentimental value. So I really, really do like it. Kid, but I have a feeling she will be a handful. Moving on from the Cattleyas to another very, very fragrant orchid. This is my Mule Year Oncidium, which is not an Oncidium anymore. It is reclassified into the Trichocentrum Alliance, which I have to say, I really, really like. I want to give myself more Mule Year Oncidiums because, oh boy, this one is a good one. So this is the Marine Cross with the Hematochilum. And first of all, I was not expecting the flowers to be as big. For whatever reason in pictures, I thought they were like two centimeters wide. No, they're about four. They're pretty big. Second, I was not expecting it to be this fragrant, but guess what? It is super fragrant. Now the fragrance, I don't think is for everybody. It smells sweet, but at the same time, lemony, kind of citrusy a little bit. It's a very weird mixture. I personally love it. But then again, I like the Cygnotus Wine Delight pharmacy smell as well. So my senses might be a little twisted. I don't think the fragrance is for everybody on this orchid, but it's not really that offensive. It's mainly sweet, but it has a sort of heaviness to it. Now, when it comes to care, this orchid has been a joy to grow, but I have a feeling that I kept it in very, very, very bright light all the time. And that kind of made it look a little bit pale. So I moved it under a grow light actually, and we'll see if the coloration changes, but it did great. It's full of roots, it bloomed. It's a thirsty orchid, just like the Oncidiums, but it doesn't really look like an Oncidium. More like a Cycopsis, right? It has very, very tiny pseudobulbs and pretty large leaves, but obviously the flowers look nothing like the Cycopsis. More like the Oncidium, but it's a weird combination, I would say. Anyway, definitely recommend it. It's a joy to grow. It's a beautiful orchid. And if you end up enjoying the fragrance, that's a bonus. If not, just put it in a different room and wait for it to be done with its blooms. Next up, let's remain in the realm of 
form our own cidiums, here are the Tulumnias. And my favorite Tulumnia at the moment is in bloom. This is Genting Volcano. I had this one in the past, but I lost it. It was not vigorous at all. And then I repurchased it from the very same seller. I took a leap of faith and this one is vigorous. So I'm pretty sure there was an issue with the previous one that I have or had rather. So some say this orchid is fragrant. It is not, mine it's not. But at the same time, take a look at those colors. They are pretty hard to describe. They're a sort of cherry burgundy dark red with a beautiful yellow center. This coloration is straight up my alley. It looked so, so good in pictures. That's why I purchased it. And I have to say it looks just as good in reality. It's a beautiful Tulumnia orchid. I am so, so happy to have it. It is hands down my favorite Tulumnia at the moment. The secondary spike it has bloomed identical to the main flush. Typically my Tulumnia hybrids produce different flowers on the secondary spikes, which is always interesting for me. This one doesn't do that, but it's gorgeous. I love it. It really is something to behold. And a complete surprise, this is my Tulumnia Siku Charlotte. I purchased it as Oncidium. These guys used to be called Oncidiums at some point in history, but not anymore. And do you notice something in particular with this orchid? Mm -hmm. It is pyloric. I typically don't like this type of peloria where the lip forms the entire flower, so the petals are completely looking like lips. But there's something about this one that I like. I don't know if it's the fact that it's so compact and so tiny and the color is golden and I like golden. I don't know. I really like it though. I'm curious to have the non peloric version as well. Yellow Tulumnias, I didn't really see all that much. So I wouldn't mind to have a non peloric version of this orchid as well. But it's not necessarily a very, very popular orchid from what I see. I purchased it as a sort of a bonus plant. It was like a bunch of no-name mixed Tulumnias, Oncidiums, slash something of the sorts. This one just happened to have a tag. I cannot say that I've seen it a lot in nurseries. I think it's fun with the whole Peloria situation, but I would be curious to see the proper version as well. Non-fragrant, just like the Genting Volcano. Next up, let's go closer to the Oncidium Alliance. Here we have an Alisara. This is the Peggy Ruth Carpenter, not Gem. This is, let's say, the original version. And I think you can see there is a very big difference. If you remember the Gem from last month, this one is now purple. It's well, it is a little purple. It's a lavender pink with some sort of burgundy purple spots. But it is beautiful. It's an orchid that I've had for quite a while in my collection. It has suffered a little bit due to watering issues, as always. This one has a very typical Alisara fragrance, which is peppery. And care-wise, again, very typical Alisara Oncidium culture. I will link you to my tutorial down below. Very easy grower, as long as she gets her water. When she doesn't have water, she fusses up. Next up, here is a No ID on Cidium. It's one of those that we rescued in 2019. I'm not gonna say last year because it's not gonna be last year anymore. So in 2019, I got myself a whole bunch of Oncidiums. I love Oncidiums. They're not necessarily the orchid that proliferates the most because not all of them prefer the heat. And especially these guys, which have some odontoglossum in their parentage, not so much, but I managed to rehabilitate most of them and now they're starting to bloom even though they're not full potential yet. And this was one of my favorites because it looks quite a lot like the Nelly Eiler or the Oncidopsis part of the, let's say, intergeneric spectrum, but it's not. The coloration is quite grayish, muted. It does not smell like the Nelly Eiler or any Miltoniopsis that I have does not look like the Cheyenne, does not look like anything, and it kind of looks like a lot of things at the same time, but it's not. It's not the Francine, it's not the Stefaniler. So yeah, if you have ideas, let me know in a comment down below. I'm aware it looks like many things, but it's not. It really isn't. And I'm hoping that the color really shows off properly on camera because it, it's really interesting. Very hard to find these muted, grayish, reddish colors in orchids.
All right, now let's go through the Dendrobium Phalaenopsis types and there were quite a few. My pride and joy, the blue happiness. Funny story, the purple happiness, he's not performing that well, which is strange because he is very vigorous and grows very, very well. And if you remember when I purchased them, that one looked much better than this one. This one was almost dead. But flower wise and flowering wise, the blue happiness outperforms everybody, including the purple happiness. So I don't know what's up with that, but this is my personal favorite Dendrobium Phalaenopsis. You will have a tutorial down below in the description if you want to learn more about them. These are commercial names. I'm not entirely sure if they do have a registered name, but you will probably find it in flower shops here in Europe. This particular one is super, super common. The other ones that I will show you are very common as well, and they are a joy to grow. They really like the heat. They don't fuss too much with watering either. So even if you forget to water them, it's okay with these guys. They're kind of like cattleyas in this regard. Here you will see the Polar Fire, which is another super beautiful dendrobium that I have. It's also very vigorous, but you can see it has slightly different traits when it comes to flower shape and also leaf shape. By the way, none of them are fragrant, nothing perfumey in any case, but they all pretty much take the very same care. This guy you're seeing here is the Thailand Black. This one actually I think has a registered name and I think it's the Velvet Melody, which I do believe it is. But being that it comes from a commercial nursery that calls it Thailand Black, I'm gonna call it like that because I'm not entirely sure if it's 100% the Velvet Melody. This guy can smell a little bit like something fresh, but I'm not gonna call it fragrant or perfumey, especially compared to things like Cattleya's. I would not purchase this orchid in the hopes that it will be fragrant, but I would definitely go for the coloration. It's very, very dark and very velvety. Here we have one that I really don't know what it is. Again, it's very, very common in Europe. I've seen it around in flower shops and with other people as well. This one looks a little bit different than all the others. It has shorter and chubbier canes, but it has the same traits. It blooms very heavily on multiple flower spikes. It is not fragrant and the coloration is really, really pretty. My camera cannot really pick up this purpley lavender color very, very well. It kind of shows up a little bluer than it should, so I just switched settings to give you a better representation of the flowers in detriment of the leaves. The leaves now look a little bit green yellow, but they're not really in reality. So I'm just focusing on giving you the coloration on the flower more accurate. And lastly, here we have the banana chocolate, which is a really cool name. I love this orchid. Back in the day when I first had my first banana chocolate, I thought it smelled a little bit like bananas. So it does have a little bit of a sweet type of scent, but very, 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 very mild. And if your nose is slightly stuffy, you'll probably not detect anything from this orchid. So don't imagine it's very perfumey, but it is pretty and it grows just as well as all the other ones. And I think that is about it for this month and this year. Thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging around with me during this year. I hope my videos were a bit of a relief from whatever you were going through. I enjoyed making them a lot and I will continue to do them next year as well. But I'm sure next year will be much, much better than this year. And I wish you all a much, much better, much healthier, much full of good year. And with that said, again, thank you so, so, so much for watching my videos and for being part of my community. I will see you very, very soon after the break. Don't forget to check the description for additional links and for the Orchids at Heart campaign, which will end on December 31st. And with that said, I wish you all a happy new year and I'll see you next time. Bye.